Welcome to the videos for your stool project. So the stool project is going to be composed of a number of different videos as you know, but we're going to start right at the beginning and what that means is we need to know our measurements, which you can find in the written instructions, or you can follow along and be writing them down along with this video. Okay? So we have a number of different components in our stool project. Um, so we obviously are going to have the pieces that make up the steps. I only have two out of the three on here right now. But that's going to be broken down, right? Then you have the frame. And even the frame is kind of broken up into two different parts. We're going to build the, the frame of the step first, and then the frame of this step, and we'll install the legs onto those after, okay? So we're going to start by cutting all the pieces for this. Your pieces for the top are already cut to length because they don't fit in your miter box. Mr. Coop did that for you. But we are going to cut all these pieces out of the material that you have. Okay, a few more reminders before we get going on cutting. Um, you want to start, of course, by finding the fresh cut end. So maybe you can see here there's a, oh, that's not a very good cut right there. <clears throat> This one's pretty smooth. If neither of yours are good, then you just need to set up your saw and cut a very small amount off so that you have a clean cut, okay? So once you have a clean cut, we are gonna make our measurement. Our first two measurements, and again, there are four pieces we're gonna cut from this. Two at 11 and a quarter and two at five and a quarter. Which ones are we gonna cut first? Ah, glad you asked. Well, we always cut the longest one first or shortest ones first? The longest ones first. Why? Because if we cut the short ones first and we cut them too small, they can't be used for anything else on the project. Whereas, if we accidentally cut the 11 and a quarter ones long, short, then we can use that for the 5 and a quarter. In fact, we could get both 5 and a quarters out of it probably. So that's what's good about that. Now. You guys should be using a sharp pencil, whereas Mr. Coop's gonna use a pen just so you can see it happening here in front of your eyes. Okay, so we're gonna go 11 and a quarter. And a quarter inch is the one, two, three, fourth mark over. And we're gonna do our crow's foot, 11 and a quarter. I'm gonna take my trusty speed square. And remember, I like you to put your pencil or pen, well, pencil right on that point. Move your speed square to it and go ahead and mark your line. Now, your shims are different than they used to be. Remember, you're putting your material tight towards the back. Your shims now, I gave you two of these and the reason is we're gonna have some angled cuts here soon, but we don't yet. Don't forget to put your little spacer block underneath over there. If it's still moving a little bit, you may want to put something else also under there. I'm going to actually do... Ooh, that's a nice fit. Okay. That's going to make it so that this is nice and square. Okay, and we're making sure our line is on this side. Oh, I forgot to mention. I don't know if you saw this, but I drilled a new hole here so that I don't have to keep removing this screw. A new hole here to hold my saw down. I don't tighten it very much because <clears throat> I don't want to uh, bend the blade. Okay, these new wedges work really great. The way we do this is we set one in here, another in here, and we tighten it until it doesn't move. 11 and a quarter. Go ahead and cut and get two of those and then two at five and a quarter. Watch and learn. I got my 11 and a quarters. You can make sure that they're exactly the same. And it's very important that these ones are exactly the same because otherwise your step will be a little bit wonky. 
Okay, so make sure these are exactly the same. If they're not, I'm gonna teach you a trick in a second. How to use your sandpaper set onto a table to just sand them down a hair if that's all it needs. So hopefully it doesn't need much. Okay, now we're moving on to the five and a quarter. Equally, they have to be just as precise. So um, when I say precise, say it's five and three sixteenths, as long as they're both the same, that'll work out just fine for these particular cuts. In a moment, when we get to our other pieces right here, these have to be very precise or a little big because otherwise these pieces won't fit inside that I have already pre-cut for you. So here we go, five and a quarter. I'm going to mark it. I'm going to use my speed square, get perpendicular lines. Here we go. Okay, we have our five and a quarter and 11 and a quarter pieces from this block. That's all we need from this stick, so you'll have some extra, you can set that aside. Okay, now we're gonna move on to uh, one of these. We're gonna start with the skinnier of the two, okay, or the thinner. So one of them is one and seven eighths, and one is one and three quarter. We want to use the smaller width of the two, starting on that first, okay? So, again, we look for the smoother of the two cut sides. If it's not smooth enough for your liking, then we can go ahead and make a fresh cut. There's plenty of room on the stick. I'm starting to get some more sawdust in here than I like. Um, you can find a trash can or if you're outside and you're sweeping up later, you dump it off to the side for now. It's nice to have a clean uh, miter box. So I need to get this little support under here. Okay. And now my miter box is set back up. For this particular piece, we're going to cut four of the exact same size. And the size we need are 15 and a half. Okay, so 15 and a half inches, four of them, and they need to be exact. Or, like I said a little earlier, a little bit big because you don't want to cut it small because right now I've, I've cut the pieces in here to just under 15 and a half, and they need to fit here. So if, uh, if we cut it too short, it's not the end of the world. We'll just need to make sure we change it in relation to this. So we need the dimension from inside to inside to be 15 and a half or a little bigger. So err on the side of bigger this time. 15 and a half. This time, in order to make it just a little big, I'm gonna line this up so I know the saw will not actually cut on the line or this side of the line, but just on this side of the line. Okay, when I set my saw on there, it is just to the right of that line, and so I'm gonna go with that. It's probably more like 15 and 9 16 maybe 15 and, uh, what is that? 17, 30 seconds, there we go. All right, here we go. Oh, I'm gonna stop right now, and here's why. I just felt these little clamps come loose. If that ever happens to you, make sure you get them tight again and maybe knock that with a hammer. See how you can see the whole line? Let's just double check. Okay, Mr. Coop. Yeah, see it's more like five and nine sixteenths now, which is fine, okay? So whatever you do for one, make sure you try and do it as close to or exact to the other one. So you're going to need four very identical pieces. So on this one, you want to, if you make the mark by holding this one on there, you will want to take away the pencil line this time because the pencil line is the outside of the cup. You 
equal or equal. Four flush, good. Equal, 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 equal. There's one that's a little bit uh, bigger than the other, so I'm gonna grab sandpaper, I'll show you how to do that. When I stand these up, one of them is specifically longer than the other one, or particularly long. So I'm gonna take that one, I'm take my sandpaper, and I'm gonna put it on a flat surface You gotta be careful though that you don't lose square, that it stays flat. It's easy to make that rounded instead of um, flat. So I'm gonna just touch it a little bit. Knock out a lot of it. I'm gonna go to the other side. Excellent, now we're there. If you have a lot to take off, it might be worth trying to get back on the saw. If the saw will not cut, when it has no material on one of the sides. It will probably push it off or slide off. But as long as it has material to both sides of it, so if it's an eighth inch bigger, quarter inch bigger, you can make those cuts again. <clears throat> if you do the sanding technique and you're taking off a full sixteenth or more, you may want to bring your speed square and just draw a line that you need to go to. So if if this piece does not line up with that one, you can make a mark and a square over so that you know you're staying square and that your piece is not getting beveled. Okay, so I have my four uh, equal six of uh, 15 and a half. I have my two 11 and a quarters and five and a quarters. We are on to the next stage, which is cutting the legs out of the 1 and 7 eighths material, okay, that's our wider stick, so we'll jump into that. Now, this is a bit tricky, there's going to be two different cuts you're going to make, you're going to make two at 17 and a quarter, ooh, that's my rough side, and two at 19 and a quarter, that one's better. Let's start with the 17 and a quarter. What? Oh, I was testing you. 19 and a quarter, right? Because the 17 and a quarter can come out of the 19 if we screw them up. So let's do 19 and a quarter first. The 19 and a quarter are these angled pieces that need to be longer. 17 and a quarter are the straight ones. As long as you don't make any miscuts, you'll have some extra wood. These three pieces are extras. Okay? So, right here, I have all the pieces I need to make the frame. So these will be for the frame, and these will be for the legs. Before we move on and get rid of this, now you get to see the tricky part. You want to learn how to cut those angles on the bottom here? Notice, these cuts here and here are angled. So, Coop figured out a tricky way for you to use these clamps to make those angle cuts. You gotta pay special attention right now. Here we go. Before we get to cutting this and using those special wedges that I just showed you, we actually wanna just make sure we have a line that dictates where we wanna cut this. So, here's how we use this speed square to get a specific degree. Along here you'll see it reads 0, to 5, 10, 15, 20, and so on and so forth. We want to hold this tight here, where it says pivot, 
and rotate this until we get to 21 degrees. Okay, kind of hard to do it in the air, but I'm gonna get, I'm gonna get there. 21 degrees. Now you want to make sure that the pivot point is right at the very apex of this cut. Okay, and we're gonna mark that. So we're not 21 degrees, right there, and I'm tight there, so I can make that mark, and that will be 21 degree cut. Okay, very important that this angle is the same down here, so we're going this direction from high to low. So, I bring this back over. I'm do it on this side. Get it right to the end. Move it until it says 21. Going this direction, going this direction. They need to be the same. That's gonna make you understand, or that's gonna help it, help you make the right cut when you come here because you'll actually need to flip over on one side. So see how, when you look at this, the angle's the same, there and there. These need to be parallel to one another. All right, now we'll go ahead and wedge this, and I'll take another picture, so that, get it right where we want it. You can put some pressure on that. And remember, we're just trying to cut on the forward push. There we go, we got ourselves a nice angle. Let's do that again. Okay, nice parallel cuts, so that'll allow for the leg to go like this. Wonderful. Okay, let's do that again. We're gonna make our mark onto our other one from this one. Okay, mine are not exactly the same. All right, so there we go. Legs, the bottom step, top step, and you'll of course have the pieces Mr. Cooper already cut for those steps.